Hello, and thank you for watching this video on how to start a pipeline execution for an existing AWS code pipeline via the AWS.NET SDK. I am Ignacio Fuentes, a solutions architect here at AWS. AWS Code Pipeline is a fully managed continuous delivery service that helps you automate your release pipelines for fast and reliable application and infrastructure updates. Code Pipeline allows you to automate the build, test, and deploy phases of your release process. This enables you to rapidly and reliably deliver features and updates. You can easily integrate AWS Code Pipeline with third-party services such as GitHub or with your own custom plugin. With AWS Code Pipeline, you only pay for what you use. There are no upfront fees or long-term commitments. So let's get started. As you can see, I already have a code pipeline in my account. Normally, and by default, every time that you make a change in source control, the pipeline will be triggered and all its steps taken. This is the current behavior. But what if you wanted to introduce a more complex or conditional logic to determine whether a change in source control should or should not result in triggering your pipeline? For example, Consider the scenario of your application having a readme file that is still part of source control, but changes to it need not trigger a pipeline execution to recompile, retest, and redeploy the application. This pipeline is tied to a code commit repository. This repository has an ASP.NET application with controllers, models, and views, as well as a readme.md file. What we want to do is introduce custom logic in .NET Code to control the events that kick off the pipeline. The behavior that determines that upon each change in source control, the pipeline should be triggered is configured in Amazon EventBridge via an EventBridge rule. This is the rule that we will modify. As we can see, the target of this rule is the pipeline directly. What we will do is, we will modify the target of the rule to invoke an AWS Lambda function instead of having it trigger the pipeline directly. With this in place, let's take a look at the code for the .NET Lambda function that executes the logic we want. I am using Visual Studio Code and .NET Core 3.1 although you can also do this in Visual Studio and other versions of the .NET framework. The first thing this .NET Core function will need is the NuGet packages for code pipeline and code commit. We can add these packages in the csproj file of our lambda.NET Core function. Back in our function, let's take a look at the code to create our custom logic. First, we set the values for the list of files we want to ignore in case of changes. We set the names of our code commit repository and pipeline. The function will receive and automatically deserialize our event, which will contain the old commit ID and the commit ID of the event that triggered the function. With these two IDs, we can use the code commit get differences async method to determine what files changed between the incoming commit and its parent commit. This method will return a list of differences between the two commits. We will iterate over the differences, and if any of the files in the differences is not included in our list of files to ignore, the pipeline should be triggered. Otherwise, the pipeline will not be triggered. Let's go to our ASP.NET application and make a change to the readme.md file and push it to code commit. Back in the code commit UI, we can see that there is a new commit. Now, let's go over to the pipeline UI to see if it has been triggered. As expected, since we only made a change to the readme.md file, the pipeline was not triggered. We can even corroborate this if we go to the AWS CloudWatch logs for our function. 
we can see in the logs that the function was executed and the returned value was no need to launch pipeline. Now, let's do this same process again, but this time changing another file that's part of our application. And we will see if the pipeline does get triggered this time. We will change our index.cshtml file, save it, and push it to source control. We can see in the code commit UI that there is a new commit. Now, if we go over to the pipeline UI, we can see that it has indeed been triggered. We can see in the logs that the function was executed and the returned value was pipeline launched. As you can see, it's very easy to use the .NET SDK for code pipeline. And in today's example, I showed you how to invoke a pipeline from .NET code, but it's just as easy to use any of the other functions from code pipeline, such as creating, reading, deleting, or any other functionality available as part of the SDK. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Thank you for watching.